got to identify one of my favorite herbs. This is an herb that I use a lot with the boys. And um, let's see, this was actually the first herb that I learned to identify in the wild, and it was the first herb that you learned to identify too, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so what is the herb that we're going to go find today? Yarrow. Yarrow. It's called yarrow, all right? And we're going to show you how you will be able to identify it when you're walking down the road with your family. Um, this is a pretty big patch of yarrow. Normally, we only see like one or two little sprigs coming up. Uh, but yarrow is really easy to identify. In fact, it's the first herb that Judah learned to identify when we were out for a walk. And actually, I think it was the first herb I learned to identify out in the wild. But today I'm gonna show you up close what yarrow looks like so you can look for it when you're out on a walk with your family. So the main way that I learned to identify yarrow was the flowers because wild yarrow, the flowers are white. And you can find some varieties, I think, that are pastel. But if you see yarrow that is uh, like bright pink or purple, those are not wild yarrow, those are hybrids. Um, and they don't have as much uh, medicine in them as the wild yarrow does. But anyway, so here are the white flowers. And you can see they're kind of, the stem branches off in a lot of different places. And then again, the, they, they continue just to branch off. I think that's called spidering. They just keep branching. And I don't know if you can see that or not, if that's too blurry. But it's tiny, tiny little white flowers. They've got a little yellow center and about four or five white petals along each flower. And, you know, they're not too big. They're just really little. And they usually, like I said, grow in clumps. Now, you can see this is the main stem right here. And it goes, let's see if I can move this out of the way goes all the way down into the ground there and all up the stem are these leaves and the leaves are kind of like fern leaves they're really feathery and they're really soft and they just branch out all over the place can you see that yep Leaf. can you see it judah yes okay good all right so you can see all those leaves now if you were to harvest this yarrow and dry it you could put your hand down here on the bottom and pull all those leaves off to get the leaves. And Mama, is that really right? Is what right? Is, is, is it really right that you can uh, dry it and pull the leaves off? Uh-huh, it makes it come off really quick so you don't have to pick every single leaf off. It makes it a lot easier. All right, so that's pretty much how you can identify yarrow by the little uh, white flowers with the yellow centers and then these feather-like leaves all over them. Now, let's see, yarrow blooms late spring through fall, but uh, at the end of spring, or maybe even early spring, the flowers won't be on there, so you'll have to pay attention um, to see if you can see just these feathery leaves starting to come up from the ground. And it grows about, you know, anywhere from one to three feet tall. So in early spring, mid spring, something like that, it's gonna be lower to the ground and all you're gonna be able to look for are these feather leaves coming up. And when you see that, then you're gonna have a good clue that that's a patch of yarrow and you can just watch for it to come up and bloom. And then um, late spring, early summer, uh, you can harvest it. And yarrow is very aromatic. Like if I broke this um, leaf off and I can rub it between my fingers, and I can smell it and it smells really strong. And even if you come across a patch of yarrow in the winter and you can tell that it's all dried up, you can still break a piece off and rub it between your fingers and smell it and see if it smells strong. If it smells strong, then the properties of the plant are still in there and you can use it. But if it doesn't smell, then it's good and dead and you'll have to wait till next spring. <laughs> or order some online. Hey folks, Rose here. I'm in the middle of harvesting yarrow, and halfway through I thought, you know what, I should share this. Um, showed my yarrow patches in the garden during my garden shares. Here's what I've cut. There's a whole tray full. Here's what I've trimmed off the flower tops. And these are the stalks that are left, which I still want to go back through because there's leaves on there, and I have harvest the leaves as well. I was going to try to give you a quick uh, kind of tutorial on how I get from this big stack of cuttings to this nice little pile of flowers. It's not really that hard. So basically all there is to it is taking one of your stalks. Um, yeah, let's see, upside down might be better to see. You can see how 
flowers all bunched up. And the easiest thing to do, just try another angle, is to try to get underneath here, bunching up the flower tops and trimming them. And then I'll try to aim this towards the camera, but I'm just bunching up the flowers and cutting off the tops. Because that's what I want. It'll dry faster this way too. They can be just hung to dry and then trimmed up later. Obviously another way to do it, but I like doing it this way. I find they dry a lot faster this way rather than hanging them. What I'm going to do to, to dry this current batch, move this out of the way, the dried, is I have parchment paper, lots of parchment paper, and lots of trays. So I'll spread out this big pile onto several trays until it's relatively thin. And try to keep it in a, as dry a place as possible. Our humidity has been really high, so as long as I'm running the air conditioner, it'll take some of the moisture out of the air and help to dry these quicker. It'll probably take a few days, but I do have to, once they're on the trays and give them 24 hours, I'll go and I'll stir them up a bit just to kind of get all the different areas to dry. And you'll know when they're dry because they come out pretty crispy and they're much smaller. They're not like real crunchy crispy, but I know these are dry. So here's my yarrow now spread out on two trays in a pretty fine layer. And I'll keep turning them every few days until it's dry. And there's the leaves, which I pulled off all those stems. Should probably spread them in another thinner layer, but the leaves are pretty airy, so circulation, air circulation can get through them pretty well. Mm -hmm.